as i am flying down to chicago i am living in the main downtown area it is not as much costly as compared to the countryside or the rural areas so including the rent i estimate around 5 to 550 dollars not more than that when i was doing my family business i was into finance i was handling all the accountancy and everything part and i was also into stock market and investing thing so for my first step i would say to the young traders that never go for the different channel tips they are all wrong and all fake go for paper trading first and mm-hmm. also just understand the financial statement and understand the business in which you are investing like every student i was also a bit nervous when the rejection part came because on the starting basis i got rejected from two three universities applied out of five i would suggest go with the counselor because they are experienced they are in the field for a long time you guys understand the psychology and the mind of a student i would say when you land in us don't get very hectic to just get to just settle it as soon as possible take your time welcome guys to amp podcast today we have agam shah with us he is flying off to depol university uh, for the september 23 intake his journey has been very long i would say it's been 16 months since he joined us and uh, there were a lot of ups and downs and i think any of you who is looking forward to move to usa will find a lot of insights in this podcast so first of all welcome agam how are you i'm fine nikhil what about you how are you all good yes i am good here i am good and secondly congratulations on your offer and your visa getting approved which i think was a big hurdle right so yeah I, thank you so much for that yeah all thanks to you you and your team no problem for all and, the support uh, and everything yeah definitely i think we had a quite a journey for 16 months you started very early uh, and uh, even at that point of time i had uh, you know commented you that you started very early this is going to be helpful and i think it was yeah. helpful because we faced yeah, so my first my first conversation was with you only i think like we both started conversation then we had different cas and everyone connecting to us yeah. so yeah it was very good thing and was a very bit long journey like i would say yeah. not experienced anything yeah yeah right. so i think it worked out in favor of you because as we started early whatever challenges you faced you had time to bounce back from them as well so i think uh, that was a huge boon to start early because you had that you know target in mind that i want to start early i want to get my offers early i think that really played well for you so kudos to you to starting early because many people you know uh, get get a wake up call around new years that they have to go abroad and that's why they get right. stuck so first thing i would like to commend is that you started early and that's why i think today we are flying off to us right so that's great right let's start with your profile can you just give us a background of what you did in your bachelor's and what experience you had and what were your ambitions so i had done my all schooling and college in my hometown mumbai i have done bachelor's in commerce from mm-hmm. uh, mumbai university mm-hmm. and not sp- i am specialized in finance and after that i have started my own business and joined my own father's business mm-hmm. family business and from that day from after my completing graduation until now i was just working with my family in my family business and was also working on my own business right so you had two business so one was a family and second was your entrepreneurship yeah, correct okay okay and how did this thought come about ki us jaate hain ms finance karte hain like such kind of uh, courses or how did this come about how did this thought come about like uh, when i was doing my family business i was into finance i was handling all the accountancy and everything part and i was also into stock market and investing thing so i had a curiosity i would say not curiosity but also a intention to learn more about it a point yeah like sometimes when you get a point like you know you want to know something about the field about the particular thing what are you going through so at starting i was like a very amateur invest investor like mm-hmm. a youngster investor i would say who just invest as per different tips and everything coming from different channels mm-hmm. but later on i like i like to know about more of the companies their financial records the financial statements and from mm-hmm. there that point i got to know that yes i need to know more about it and do my masters in it so i just decided about it and i just uh, took up decision on it yes perfect 
ठीक है आई थिंक यू हैड दैट एक्सपीरियंस आई थिंक रेटिंग डिड हेल्प इन योर एप्लीकेशन आल्सो राइट बिकॉज वी यूज दैट इन योर एसओपीज एंड एस एस दैट यू डिड ट्रेड ऑन योर ओन राइट एंड दिस डिड फेवर यू इन द लॉन्ग रन राइट तो एनी सजेशन टू एमेच्योर यू नो आई वुड से ट्रेडर्स राइट नाउ हु आर स्टार्टिंग दर जर्नी इन देर कॉलेज बिकॉज इन कॉलेज ओनली पीपल स्टार्ट टू एक्सपेरिमेंट So any any right. tips for them? So for the first tip, I would say to the young traders that never go for the different channel tips. They are all wrong and all fake. They just show what they earned, not the losses they occurred during the process. Because they only show their positive parts, so that you guys get attracted, take their subscriptions, and just pay them for their all the losses they have done. So never go with that tip. And also, I would say. Just if you have anyone elder in your house who knows some more about it, just listen to them and just take steps. Like take baby steps, I would say slowly, slowly and steadily as invest and learn more about. And I would say go for knowing, go for paper trading first, and mm-hmm. also just understand the financial statements and understand the business in which you are investing. Right. That would be the main learning from you. That because if you know the business, you will know their. future plans the expansion plans their exploration the way they are handling the business the profits and everything so right. according to that you could understand that where to invest and how to invest perfect i think that my caution caution yeah caution for is is never go for the tips so mm-hmm. all all the tips are fake i would say right do your um, own research i would yeah, yeah yeah do your own research and just learn from your experience right. i would say learn from experience yeah if you are doing as a youngster i know there might be some hurdles you would you would also face some of the losses but never just get saddened with it or just lose hope on it like all the all the life paths have hurdles and ups and downs so always take your own risk limited risk which you are taking yeah Uh, I think I had one of my students uh, who was a very serious trader, just like you also, and he also gave the same tip to many of our students. He, in fact, used to listen to board meetings, right? Because you guys yeah. are invited if you are shareholders, or so you can listen to board meetings, correct, and correct, then he yes. uh, took inputs from there and according to that traded. So I think that's a very good, um, I would say, advice because many people do watch YouTube and take the tips and go to the market. No, no, no. try to try to learn and just understand the audit reports and. Learn what our audit reports are meant to be. What financial reports, financial analysts do. Try to learn that. And according to that, just think of investing in any of the company. Okay. And uh, how important do you think, like anyone who is going for MS Finance, right? How important do you think is this trading part into their application, or before they move out to US and learn finance? Uh, do you think they should definitely do some trading in India before moving to US? i would not say that they should do trading but yeah they should know they should learn and they should see the company's financial statements they should learn the statements trading is a personal part those who wants to do those who don't want to do but before that just try to learn and understand the financial statements of the company corporate companies so that you get to know how do they work and on what management do they work mm-hmm. how do they manage their finances in a big companies like billions of companies So if you understand that, and after that, if you choose for trading, that is a good point, and and will take you to a success point long way. But if you directly jump into trading, like a peer is a peer is doing, so I also have to do that. Don't give that fear or that FOMO. I would say fear of missing out. Hmm. But yes, learn learn to understand the finances a bit first, and the audit report on what company has a plan in expansion. and what company is going through are they making up the books or just manipulating the figures or do they really earning profits and generating the revenues okay i think that's a very good advice right so great that was the advice for young traders or people who are trying to pursue ms finance coming back to a little bit of our study abroad plan right so we started in may and uh, then we started shortlisting our universities or so So, how did you come down to the right university shortlist, and how did the counselors here make it made it easy for you? I would thank your team mainly. I would thank Shubh and Anukriti. Anukriti was the main major part on just get getting sorted all my uh, colleges based on their merits, based on their rankings, based on what how do they give preference to the MS in finance. so uh, anukriti helped me in all of the formalities and everything to 
still to submit the for, uh, applications and to work on applications and everything. So they right. gave me an idea. I I went to my research. I also asked one two of my known people who have been to abroad how to work. They told me just talk to the counselors. I had a chat with Anukriti, and she helped me. And she mainly she listened to me. She solved all my problems, all my queries, all my questions. And according to that, and according to my profile, she shortlisted twenty of the universities. And out of that, I have list I have shortlisted ten of that. Uh, so here one question for you what was your primary filter in a university like what was non negotiable for you ki ye to chahiye mujhe university par first was that the university should focus not on a sideline of msc finance but have a good and a good faculty or a good academics of of msc finance because that was my core and i i was not i was not obliged to top university but yeah i wanted good universities with a good surrounding and mainly in proper main towns so that i can get a good opportunities for that after that that's, that's a brilliant point I, i was going to say the same thing that as a finance person you would want to be in the big towns right the big cities yeah. the main financial capitals and you're going to chicago right now so i think that's great Correct. so so, so how uh, is- one correction i am in chicago right now oh sorry yeah you are in chicago yes. so uh I, we would come to that right how was the move and all but yeah this factor chicago factor right so how important do you think because many people sometimes what they do is when they talk to us about universities they talk about top universities but in remote locations right so what according to you would be the big difference between going to a main city and a remote city what is the big difference uh the big difference which will showcase in your profile is that if you are coming from a Big city and a good college in a city. The preference of opportunities and the gates for the opportunities open widely because you get to know more of the people. You get to interaction of the more of the people. Whereas in remote areas, people are very inquisitive, not like very extrovert. They are, might be like introvert and they do not like to. Oh, uh, I would say interact with people more over foreign people. I would say. Rather than uh, yeah, rather than talking to their own community, so I would suggest if you have a mediocre university in the mm-hmm. town, in the main city, mm-hmm. uh, select that rather than selecting a top university in the uh, mm-hmm. countryside or the county side. Yeah. yeah, I think it's all about networking because uh, international cities will have international students, thus more Correct. international jobs, and thus you will have a networking pool. in uh, yes chicago new york yeah, uh, more of more of exploration would be done in the main cities rather than in the county cities yeah. although one counter question that i have heard a lot of times here is that big cities might have higher living cost right so do you think in the long run like if you are going you to us you might go for 3 to 5 years but in the long run does the living cost matter a lot or you can manage it if you are going to big city would i wouldn't agree to that because See, I as I'm, I have flying down to Chicago. I'm living in the main downtown area. It is not as much costly as compared to the county, countryside or the rural areas because mm-hmm. moreover they are living expenses as same as that. Mm-hmm. And one more thing, like if you think for a long run, this is just an investment for yourself, mm-hmm. for your exploration of the city of of your profile. which gives you a b- good build up so if you don't if you don't opt for the major city you would lack their culture i would say the mm. networking culture the mm. way of talking to the people mm. the way of connecting to the people mm. and i would suggest i would say that if you think of the living cost see everyone goes to usa does jo- part time job and everything so that would just get settled off i would say if you do a part time job also you get a settled off and if you get a good apartment in the area with a good number of uh, i would say good number of roommates or house of how house mates you get good affordable and budgetable apartments in the main city also right perfect so i think that clears a lot of doubt because a lot of students have this living cost doubt that maybe the cities will cost them 15 16 lakhs per year and the counties will only cost them 9 lakhs or 8 lakhs this is the major perception 
Yeah. Although we have we have always promoted top cities because at the end of the day you want ROI, return of investment. Even Correct. if the big big city is asking for a little more money in the living cost, I think it can compensate with the kind of job. Yeah, that but they have. they will give you a good life, a good living conditions rather than being. I would say on the security basis also, living in a major city is a more securable place than living in the rural areas or the uh, uh, county side because. There, there might be more of criminal action, criminal activities compared to the that uh, people full of roads and not empty roads will have help them yeah. in the security also. I can understand. Okay, ठीक है. So these were your filters. Uh, you needed a good faculty and you needed a good location for the universities. So when we shortlisted the universities, right? Then. when you reflected on your journey until then for example you did your bachelor's you helped your family business and you started your own business as well so when it, the d day came to write down your sop or essays how did that feel like to reflect back on to the entire journey that you had and how to represent it to the university so how did you face this hurdle i would again thank anukriti for this because she gave me a lot of tips and the drafts she had made she told me that to write all my achievements all my work done till now mm. so that all my hobbies all my interests so that which will help my profile others as sop to build more stronger and more commendable to the universities that why you want to do this course right okay theek okay. hai and when the first draft of sop came to you right so after we had done the editing or so how did you feel like going through the first draft yeah that was very good i would say a top quality sop with all the detailing mentioned what i have given them the bulleting points about my profile till date and also mentioned in a very good language very good uh, fluency i would say all the flow i would say that anyone could read would get convinced for the background or the profile which i have, which was made by me On the draft for made by Anupiri on the draft was given by me. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And uh, when it came to you know the interview parts and the you know I would say uh, finally getting the offers part, right? So uh, how did that go about? Because you got offers from two universities, I guess, right? So correct, correct. So how did the rejects play out? How did the you know um, offers play out for you? Did you get the oh. university that you wanted? Uh, like I would say, every student, I was also a bit nervous when the rejection part came because on the starting basis, I got rejected from two, three universities, applied out of five, and uh, I was very nervous. I was very, ex- I would say, very, I would not say uh, anger, but I was very much hyper. I was very much stressed. I used to every time just contact the CS. I would just talk to her. I would just. Talk about like what we what new we can do, what extra we can add, mm-hmm. so that the universities are universities feel that yeah it is a good profile you should accept it. Mm-hmm. Everything happened. Uh, so I got rejected from start in the starting I got rejected from three universities and I, like after that Anukriti told me that we should go for this. Uh, we should go for this university. Uh, and after that, I think Karthik joined me. He told me that Nepal University is one of the good universities. You should go and check their syllabus, their location, their faculty. And mm-hmm. I that uh, I did that. And after that, I got uh, accepted from the Nepal and New Haven both. Yeah. So that procedure was a like bit nervous, stressful. I would see a very hyper hyper situation as not getting uh, not getting results for what we have done. A very so, anxious state. Yeah. yeah, very anxious state. I would say a uh, more questions, more mm-hmm. curiosity to know that what could what we can add to the profile, which can yeah. help me to just get as soon as possible for the admission right. of fall twenty three. Because the days were passing on, the rejections rejections were going on, so you were not getting time to apply for the new universities. Also, as the dead, deadlines were also approaching. Right. Okay. Yeah. So here comes a very good question. I would say because many students ask if they should they should go with a counselor or not. See, your profile was always good because you got into a good university, right? So it was not a question about whether your profile was good enough or not. It's just a stressful time because it takes time, right? 
so how what do you feel like should students go with a counselor or should they apply on their own i would suggest go with the counselor because they are experienced they are in the field for a long time they will suggest to way better good universities than just researching on google i would not say don't research just take the advice from the counselor do your research if you feel something that this is not right talk to the counselor he will also just do a his research part on the mm. particular point he will get back to you the conversation the exchange of ideas will help your profile and your journey to be very easy rather than make an unexperienced person and just surfing on google and just going on the google reviews and everything that person knows how yeah. to build your profile or how to apply for a particular university on on which on which time on which period so just go with his instincts i would say right so i think you put it very beautifully here you should not stop your own research even we don't recommend that you should do your own research we are just here to advise right it's not something because the investment is a 40 50 lakhs even when you Correct. when you are a trader you invest like for 1 lakh also you take 5 to 10 tips or at least 10 advices correct when correct comes, nice. when it comes to investing 50 lakhs into one university you should have just as someone experience so that their ideas can influence you their ideas can support you right at the end of the day it's still your profile there is nothing no no magic here right? yeah it's your call yeah it's your call but if you get the ideas you'll get to know that on what point you have to check like on just doing surfing on google just taking the rankings and just uh, going with the a location i would suggest don't go with the top universities if you don't find a good faculty good course or you don't feel studying the particular subjects go with the mediocre one with a good course with a good faculty which will help you in future also just taking the name of the college would won't get you a good opportunities rather than because at the end your grades your credits matter a lot yeah i think that's a wonderful point here yeah? because that's what we also promote because we want to be collaborative effort at the end of the day it's your resume only that has gone through depot right so or any right. university that it's your resume only there's nothing added there it's just that our advices or uh, our experience can make this you know entire journey very easy that's it okay so perfect so i i think i got all my answers from here so you got into depot right now becomes a little more i would say crucial part of the journey the visa and all right so we had one visa reject as well so this was i think the most anxious period because i remember my team also you know interacting with you a lot during this so can you just tell us about what exactly happened in the visa what was your experience and now that it is approved what changed from last time so the day when i went for the interview before that i was very much like i would say very much on to like i have to do interview mock interviews i have to go for mock interviews i was just following up by cs my visa instructor prachi I was again again following up i would say i would have I have harassed her. Like I would have harassed, her, like messaging her, texting her, not mm. seeing time because I was very anxious for the interview box and everything. Mm. The day I got rejected on the morning, I would say it was eight thirty. Mm. At nine, I started calling her. I would just went on messaging her that what next I have to do, how to apply, how to go through the process, how to prepare now everything. and everything she smoothly explained to me she smoothly replied to it without seeing any time i would say i have messaged her not in the office i have also messaged her in the no, normal hours also and in that also she has explained me always being uh, i would say cooperative with me taking all my anxiousness understanding the the state i am mm-hmm. and everything and with with that she has gone through all the process she has taken it very smoothly she on her on a personal behalf on a personal note also she has taken interviews she mm. has uh, arranged for the interviews uh, twice in a day uh, mm. every day everything and on that basis she has also helped me with the visa like mm. slot booking and everything so that was a good i would say a very drastic change from the day i got rejected and the day i got accepted also was a, also the first person prachi to know about it like uh, i got accepted on uh, 25th of august i just mm. messaged her called her and she was also happy that all our hard work all our process all our i would say efforts came to came to the fruitful media yeah, like a fruitful yeah thing so then, yeah so, 
yeah. i would say like the visa process is a bit hectic i understand like every student has a very curious thing curious this or i would say a very different way of tackling the problems but i would say just be calm and be yourself it yeah. is not a rocket science that you are not going to crack it yeah be calm is something great from coming from you because you were the most anxious after the first visit <laughs> so so as an experience i would say like after getting rejected as an experience rejector i would say i got to know that being just being hyper and just getting like, putting the load on the person is not a mm-hmm. good thing yeah. i would say i understand i understand everyone has that thing that if you get a rejection you have your mentality human mentality of just putting more and more efforts and just keeping on doing the, all the hard work but i would say sometimes the rejection is not based on your project not on your profile also but sometimes it's your confidence also or sometimes it depends on the interviewer mood also i would say hmm yeah timing and your mood so it depends on so just be calm and be i would say very very calm and not as anxious as i was yeah yeah and think, go through the process yeah i think prachi uh, every student has the same review of prachi that she is very relentless right and she doesn't give up on the students that easy so Correct. you just yeah. you and uh, her team work which could get out of one reject and then in the same intake we had two visa applications one was a reject and the second was an acceptance so this yeah. is very rare this is very rare uh, also that were, that also in a period of 30 days i got a second slot that was also a, i would say god's grace yeah definitely but i think your journey has been like that you first got get reject but at the end of the day to work out in the university yes. also, visa also so i think kudos like, to you yeah in the you yeah you never gave up that was a great part because we have discussed your case here also and we really uh, you know appreciated your mentality or your uh, not giving up attitude ki jana to hai us because people drop abroad plans very fast because one thing goes wrong and they want to just you know because they are already scared of the big move so if something goes wrong they drop the plan very fast but with you we never had that problem instead you were after us ki what we can do to correct it So I think uh, that's really commendable, Agam, right? And that's why you are sitting in Chicago right now. I would say that is the majority of the uh, credits goes to you. Uh, one question here: in the first interview, first visa interview, what what do you think went wrong? Is was it the interviewer's mood, or was it some question that was very tricky? Uh, I would say like I have asked uh, to repeat him twice. That was the thing, or I would say that I was a bit confident about the interviewer. or i or the third thing is the mood because these two are the things which i think would have affected the confidence of mine and asking him to repeat twice or thrice mm. uh, just to, just i can't hear the way he was speaking he was speaking softly so i had to ask okay. him to repeat the questions there yeah. but i would say that in the second time also like i have asked him once uh, he he repeated it and he just talked to me talked to me as a normal Mm-hmm. dinner table conversation i would say right hmm. yeah so the first time it was matlab uh, if i put it uh, put it correctly you had asked the interviewer twice about what he had said what he wanted to communicate and that yeah. was some what of a break off point between you and the interviewer correct correct so, that was the point i feel and second is a confident i feel because i would really say on i don't remember anything from the first interview because i went blank I also don't remember the proper questions he asked. I also don't remember the answers which I gave. That was total blank. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's fair. So that means the documents were not the issue. Although there is a lot heap of documents that you have. No, to no, be no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. He 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 didn't see my documents at all. He just saw my passport and I twenty, and he he was done with John. Done with his answer. Yeah. Great. So second time you just got a better interviewer, I think, and uh, he granted you the visa. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. Okay. I feel. Yeah, the, I think that's a uh, very important point also because when uh, many students when they get a visa reject, they think it's about their profile or so. It's not always that. It's a human interaction with the visa inter- uh, visa officer. It can go wrong. It can go wrong. It's as simple as that. So that's great. And now when it came to uh, flying off to Chicago, how was that landing in Chicago and finding an accommodation? How was this journey? Well, again i would thank prachi for that she gave she helped me with the accommodation part she uh, gave me different group links 
telegram groups and everything and she just mentioned some of the sites of the apartments to go through it and to contact with people the people who are already in chicago to talk to them uh, also connect with them that do they have any suggestion on on campus or uh, apartments or off campus apartments so everything was i would i wouldn't say smoothly went off but yeah it went off like not as hectic as my visa process but yeah it uh, slowly and steadily took everything off yeah it landing in chicago was experience was too good i would say like i hadn't had any of the jet lag problems or anything hmm. but yeah i had a very smooth flight yeah okay so okay so where are you uh, staying right now what is the accommodation on campus or off campus off campus off campus and uh, what is the sharing and what is the charges so the, i'm i'm sharing on six people basis or uh, 3 bhk okay. so the charges are uh, 2200 dollars per month with uh, some of the moving fees and the application fees as applicable okay see fair enough so for you personally uh, you, you have just went there for like 10 uh, one week i guess one week ago yeah one week one week ago so, 10 days yeah i would say yeah how has the living expense been like including the rent what is your estimate what will be your living expense every month so including the rent i estimate around 5 to 550 dollars not more than that yeah like a normal living ex- normal living stand- standard of living and if you portray your standard of living differently that is a different concept but as a normal student living it's around uh, 300 of my rent and 2 250 of my groceries and everything with utilities and everything yeah. so around 600 even if you take 50 100 dollars more it's like maximum, i would say maximum 600 yeah maximum 600 i would say not more than that That's I think a very uh, good cost of living. I would say six hundred dollars is not that much. Even if, or, over the period of a year, it's seventy two hundred, right? So I don't think so. That will be uh, really expensive, specifically for Chicago downtown, right? I don't think so. That's very expensive. Let's see how it pans out. I think there will be some added charges also, but uh, I think that's a. Oh, there are no added charges. There are no added charges. This I have said you with utilities, with groceries. I would say with rent. That's why I said maximum six hundred, not more than that. Okay, okay, fair enough. And uh, how far is this accommodation from the university? Oh, I would say by public transport, half an hour, forty-five minutes. So, have you visited the university yet? I had my classes. Like today only, I had my classes. Was it? After that only, I am doing this okay. podcast. How was the university campus and everything? I would say I haven't explored a bit because. I had a time to get settled off with the a week travel and everything. Mm-hmm. Like now, I'll go with now. I'll go and explore the campus more yeah. over. But okay. more over, it was good. A good cultural people. I would say globalized mm. people all around the world coming to study over here. Perfect. Take it. And what are the leads on your part-time work? Like, how are you figuring that out on campus or off campus? So for that, I'm just applying for the on-campus jobs. Uh, I have applied to two, three jobs already. The reply is yet to come. And okay. I've already sent my resume and cover letters to them. Okay. So what kind of uh, on on-campus jobs are available? Are these assistantships or even uh, you know cafe, um, different kinds of odd jobs as well? What kind of jobs are available? No, I would say assistantship most moreover and <laughs> moreover internship in a I would say in a high. a uh, requisite like prerequisite job like they need uh, two years three years experience in some of the jobs some of those jobs they are uh, giving to the beginners or the amateurs who don't have any experience just want to start the experience working experience everything mm-hmm. okay yeah. like different departments are different assistants and uh, like i would say crew members for them like staff they need okay for okay Perfect. So I think uh, you moving there right now has been very good for the first week. It must have been very hectic as well for you, right? I hope it get. I hope it gets better. Any tips for people who are just landing in US because many people would have would be traveling in the next one month also. So any tips for people who are just going to land in US? Something that they should keep in mind. I would say when you land in US, don't get very hectic to just get to just settle it as soon as possible. Take your time. get acclimatized to the climate because you are traveling from a different tropical climate to a very different climate 
yeah get acclimatized to that uh, get your body settled with the different i would mm. say different food habits different routine of the day and everything and take proper like i would say 10 to 15 days to get settled don't get more on uh, studying on the first day of the college getting more of yeah learning everything in the first day knowing everything take your time yeah get settled properly and after that you have your long time to just explore everything and just to give your time to the studies okay perfect i think that's a great advice and uh, finally i would just like to take a overall review of the entire 16 month journey that you had with us right we went through ups and downs we went through rejections then we came back we had offers visa offers i think a lot of document sorting also right so end to end how did you like the process or how did you like the approach because you went through four departments with us so end to end how was your experience and anything that you would like to uh, you know recommend us or anything that you want to appreciate so i would say everything was very smooth all the cs which i have worked, like i have worked with four cs i would say from your company shubh uh, anupriti kartik and uh, prachi i think yeah. kartik and prachi are from different uh, departments but uh, i had prachi is just visa uh, but yeah rest yeah. of them are from the cs yeah. Yeah. yeah so i had worked with three of them and it was nice smooth process all of them helped it like majorly i would say anupriti did it then kartik took over Karthik also had his good his inputs, his experience, and his understanding of ideas to to mm-hmm. take my profile to another level and give a good admit in right. Deep Hall and New Haven. Yeah, right. Overall, it was very smooth, all interactive, cooperative. I would say, very mm-hmm. much understand. You guys understand the psychology and the mind of each student, and according to you, work to that. Yeah. one thing was very good from your point that you had a one admit guaranteed policy that was a good thing and that was attractive thing which i have to like which got attracted to me towards you and i was yeah. recommended by a friend to you yeah so yeah i think that's what uh, we also actually want to inculcate a team like that because here the team all the team members have either applied or have studied abroad right so they do exactly know I the psychology yeah. Yes, yeah, so they have a good experience. As, as I said, that they are very experienced people. They are not just amateurs or just sitting or doing their job. They want to uh, help people. Like they yeah. are doing it for them. Yeah. yeah, they might be doing their job, but they have their intuition of helping them and just getting them to their destination. What they have chosen for. That that's what we try to, and I I'm glad that it worked out for you. Right, and uh, that's how we also promote. Uh, our uh, employees, I would say, because they uh, they want to. These are not employees to be there. These are just counselors who wanted to be counselors. They no one is forced here. So everybody wanted to be oh, yeah. counselor, and that's why they go beyond their you know professional realm also to help you. And I think Prachi was all praises for you because uh, she actually usually don't get it doesn't get rejects for students. And when she also got, she also got a little hyper. Ki, how can one of my students get a reject in a visa? And she that's why worked double hard. And I think you also worked very hard for that. So kudos to you guys and uh, congrats on this amazing achievement yet. You have reached USA, you have reached Chicago, and you have started also. So that's brilliant. Hope we can connect again within the next six months. Look at exactly how the growth was, right? And sure, uh, sure. we'll be sending more students to Chicago also, and they will be directly in connect with you as well. So we are building communities, AMP communities in different cities of USA and UK both, right? And uh, in, in fact, in, in, yeah, that's a nice thing for the future students, I would say. Yeah. Because we are all for them, yeah. Yeah, already added to the group, but yeah, we will make that live. We will try to get you guys to meet each other so that this network stays with you because you guys are from the same alma mater. And as you already know, when you find yes. jobs, networking and referrals are the most important aspects. Oh, okay. So I think yes, yes, that's what we find. Okay, so Agam, that's it from my end. So congratulations on your offer, on your complete journey with AMP, right? Uh, any last tips for any students who are starting the journey? I would say just be calm. Like from my personal experience, be calm. Listen to your counselors. They are there to help you at any point, at all the steps, and they are they are going to do good for you only. Like they don't have anything that they'll give you some bad advice, and it's not going to benefit them at all. So just listen to them and trust them. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, Agam. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, joining us on this podcast, right? 
and we are glad to serve you glad to have you in our network as well we'll try to maintain this relationship as as much as possible okay sure sure yeah, yeah. perfect okay thank you so much okay thank you thank you